Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. James Wilson Smith, Jordan and Virginia Nickens, Prima Rahman, Jordan L. Hawk, Kat Cunico, Chad Belt, Charlie, Alona Mitznefes, Arissa, Alexei Gladilovich. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Rusty Quill and take a look at our rewards. Welcome to episode 113 of the Rusty Quill Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM, Alex Newell, and with me today I have... Ben Meredith, Brim and Ryan. Lydia Nicholas and Han Gould. And who are you playing? Where's our prick? I'm Amsterdam. Hamid Salahurin Altahan. Sasha, who's asking. And Azu. And we're going to pick up more or less where we left off, which was... Someone stealing a river. It's I a bomb villain. I finally <laughs> managed their, to do a bomb villain. found the volcano yeah. there. Sasha sort of nodding like... Even I am impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Took a lot of thinking. How would one how would one go about stealing a river? This Shows is how big hole. Big yeah. hole. Less complicated than you think. It's mostly just about workforce management. It's very boring. Well, you, the, the same can be true of a bank robbery. <laughs> just, just a big hole. Yeah, you just got to yeah. drill. It's like, the angle is important. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Hi, listen, I'm from HR. Just let you know, in this bank heist, there are going to be some dangers. So just be aware of that. You know, <laughs> stick to the red tape. No, so. You are all currently, yeah, where a river is being stolen, at the top of the mountain above Damascus. And I'm inside a volcano caldera. You are not inside a caldera. You are inside what is effectively a chasm. Should you wish to call it a caldera, you can, but there does not appear to have been a volcano there because Aww. I believe that Grizzop gave enough of a bad uh, geography check to be like, yep, I know what caused this. This is a mm. fissure. Like, you got like well, a. That's been, uh, that's, <laughs> I think that's been negated by the fact that it's, it's proven that the river's being stolen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my, my point is, is that maybe Grizzop might tell you it's a caldera. Uh, I don't even know what a caldera is. Yeah, Grizzop definitely told you it's a caldera. Let's let's commit to that. No, no, Grizzop doesn't know what a caldera it's is. A, yeah, let's commit to that. The top of a yeah. Ben knows. Stop patronising Ben. <laughs> to be honest, I actually mainly got it from context clues. Same. I've never heard that word before in my life. So we are, like I said, picking up where we left off, which is you are currently in the room that's like just a big hole, basically with a funnel. Lydia's word that she taught me at the bottom because I forgot the word. And it is clearly made for, like, human size, not just goblin size. There were a few goblin tools. There are plenty of doors leading off, including, obviously, the way that you came. Wait, no. Check check if a trap. trap. (laughs) Check a drawer for traps. Don't check if a trap. How deadly have the traps been here? Let's not start forgetting. Extraordinarily... (laughs) I was going to say badly deadly, but that's not... Super badly deadly. Well deadly. Yeah, they're not... (laughs) Totes deaders. Goodly deadly. (laughs) They wouldn't just kill you dead, they'd kill you super dead. Oh. Give me a perception check. Uh, one day I will remember what my perception is. Uh, one so day 24. you'll know your rolls. Okay, 24. Yep. I'm going to say that I need you to give me a, a random way of deciding which door you go through. Like, do you go for the flashiest looking, the least flashy, the most obscure? Just the give me something random. One. The nearest <laughs> one. So you uh, check the door that you came in. There are no traps. No. Oh, uh, I breathe in, I breathe out. <laughs> uh, you find no traps. The door is ajar. Oh, it's oh. got jam in. Woo! <laughs> you find no traps jam on trap. the door nearest oh, to the no. one that you came in. Yep. Okay, then I... It is of a similar style, so it's like steel with um, a basic lock Open on the it. Door. You will have to disable lock. Don't even bother rolling. I'm just going to let you take 10. You've checked it for traps. Okay. There are no penalties for getting it wrong. Cool. You are able to disable it. It's clear that the lock's here. Yep. A lot a lot easier than like We're clearly the inside yeah now. clearly they don't want transit sort of into here but in here it's more like oh just can you can you lock up before you close up for the night kind of deal it's kind it would of be fun. really inconvenient if all of your employees were constantly killed by the traps yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's just it's bad management um, so yeah you open the door and you find what is effectively a storage room oh, it has treasure. It has storing treasure. Boring treasure. Paper clips. It has storing treasure. A few crates in there, a couple of which are open. They have mundane goblin tools in them. Um, Some of them have some more like advanced goblin tools in them, where if you were to take the time, you could probably figure out what they were for. But goblins have this thing where it's like you make it to work as efficiently as possible, but not necessarily like handle well. 
you know, like automatic hammers that fire nails and then hammer them in midair kind of stuff. They're very, Ooh. they're very weird like that. It's a lot of things that you could one. probably figure it out. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Could we say we systematically search this place until we find something I think, noteworthy of recording? I think that would be a really cool. good idea. Yeah. Let's, do that. Let's do that. But we check every door for traps. That's yeah. fine. Yes. So you check every door, and. What you managed to f- Let's check every door for traps, and the one that's trapped is clearly the most interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't even bother opening the ones that aren't trapped. It's like, I think, you no. find you find no traps. Mm. Um, in terms of the doors, they are all super boring. Um, one of them is a different type of tools, which is like big, big tools. So it's a fairly large room, but it's things like you know a team of four goblins would use that drill over there in the corner that kind of thing like bigger stuff uh, one of them appears to be what effectively looks like a kind of um, thrown together canteen like some basic tables you know um, maybe a poster on the wall just hang in there kind of stuff <laughs> um, very very mundane and then the last one is some toilets that's it so this is the extent of this facility there, there are no more doors to explore in this chunk of this facility. Wait, how do you we get to, to another chunk, chunk of this facility? Is it through a door? Yeah. Or a pa- like how, what's, the, what's the layout of this place? So the layout I, of this place yeah. is a uh, large... I'm going to use the word caldera just as, a, as an arbitrary <sighs> pick. No, it's, uh, it's a large, comparatively circular hole in the ground that's roughly, I think I said last time, it's about 100 feet deep. At the very bottom of it is a very, very wide conical like steel conical thing the river pours down in a waterfall from the top through this illusion that you can't see from in here but Hamid can see from the top down into the conical flask around it are what is effectively just a bunch of walkways with a few rooms dotted off from those walkways and so then the way that you came this in is not actually a lair this is it's someone a- dug a big hole and put in just enough infrastructure to assist them while digging the big hole Yes. Oh, cool. Uh, Shall we just go back where we came then? Yeah, yeah. Like, sounds like interesting. Bit. Yeah. Why don't we just go home? <laughs> no, as in there were when we came into the pathways, we chose the right path, which was this way, and we didn't go to the left path, oh, which is possibly a different. Oh, bit. Mister Memory. Of that. <laughs> yeah. With also, his brain. A, no, that, pack it all up. Adventure over. <laughs> yeah. There was also a different choice point, which was when we we burned down the warehouses and we went into a hole underneath them. And there were a bunch of pipes leading off in different directions. And we went through one of the pipes, and the pipe led to the river. And the river had two different directions, so we, we, we could we can backtrack and take another choice from the pipe room as well. Bonus so, memory points for that man in the corner. Oh. This is why I don't bother remembering. I d- I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is for what it's worth, as a player, I let other people remember this stuff as well. Yeah, it's in character too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go down the other path then. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. We'll take- Hopefully something will happen. <laughs> yeah. Seven minutes in and literally nothing has happened. If only there was some sort of semi-omnipotent being controlling our lives yeah. and making them more interesting. Could maybe edit the story slightly. <laughs> yeah. so if we skip these bits, maybe. And imagine if life had pacing. <laughs> That's what editors are for. Unfortunately, you don't have that. You start backtracking. It takes ages. Why don't we RP the next <laughs> hour of your gentle walk back through traps point, that you've Alex, already I known? I resign. Goodbye. <laughs> so, yeah, you head, back, you head back the way you came. It becomes very apparent that it's big, craggy, full of caverns and stuff. It potentially isn't where you would want to build a big old factory. It is literally just an outpost. That was very, very clear once you started poking around. It is just a place to steal water and nothing else. You start heading back the way you came, and... I am not going to get you rolling, obviously, for the traps that you already know are there. Mm-hmm. Um, what you are doing is... Can you give me one more perception check, please? It isn't to spot the traps that you know, you've already seen and so on. everyone check? No, or? don't bother, <laughs> basically. I don't know if this is a six or a nine. Her perception check isn't that high. Like, if it's yeah. normal stuff to notice... The reason it's is it's something that Sasha specific. It has a little thingy. Yeah, I can't see the... That's a six. Okay, There's well, a very, oh, yeah, very faint line under yeah. it. Okay. The, the underlining Super scratched thing. off the page. Can I have yeah. another dice? Yes. Yeah. Also, I got 19. 19? Yep. Good. So, the reason for this is because Sasha's familiar with the traps, she's getting a heffing great bonus to look for bypass switches this time round. You find them. Ooh, nice. They are actually very well concealed. If you didn't know the exact part of the corridor to look for and blah, 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 yeah, you find the bypass switch for the, the big drowny room. However, it's kind of broken anyway, so you're 
I'm assuming you're pushing it to play it safe, but yeah, but yeah, it's kind of broken. You broke it. You broke my trap. Yay! Good. Woo! That's what it's for. I think that's the point, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Heading through again. Alex for the... is sick of this podcast and he wants <laughs> it Just over. Wants what I am going to have to do though is, if you remember, the coffin drop actually went off, so there is a hill in the corridor. I am, however, not going to insist on rolls because it's a very short drop. I'm, I'm going to let you take ten on this one. It's a trivial jump. So yeah, you can all hop that cavernous drop into the into the river. Can I just do a large stride over it? Uh, Azu genuinely might actually be able to do it without jumping, but I think you might want to play it safe. But uh, yeah, in real terms, it's it's not a problem once you know it's there. You finally make it back after a little while to the place where yeah the path diverged, and presumably you keep going along the service route in the opposite direction. Yep. Now. Yep. Checking yeah, checking for traps all the, the time. time. Yep. Can yep. you give me a perception check, please? Oh. Um, only 15. You don't notice this ahead of time from everyone else. Yep. Everyone else, it becomes apparent to you all at the same time. There is a slight turn to the corridor, and where it sort of bends, there appears to be... The best way to describe it is some large rune or something. It seems very out of place. Like, it has... detect magic. It has a purple colouring to it. It has sort of a silvery edge to it. Don't look directly at it. You can see it from all the way down the corridor, like, beyond the range of detect magic. You would have to approach it before you could even do sure. that. Um, the only reason that I got the perception check for Sasha is you'd have gotten extra stuff. Yeah, maybe it notices the purple glow before you look directly at it. That kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, that there is there is some kind of sigil. It is floor to ceiling and again it just looks very out of place it's like behold the eldritch rune in a underwater in a corridor, corridor. Yeah. should I shoot it um, I cast detect magic you detect a very very faint transmutation on it give me a knowledge arcana ooh, ooh I haven't rolled that in a while um, that's a lot. 31. You're pretty certain that all you're picking up on is the spell that would be required to spell that on a wall instead of paint it on a wall. It's weird. I, I, actually, I don't think it is very dangerous. Uh, you also don't recognise the language at all. Um, From knowledge arcana, like it's not it's not an arcane language that you know yeah. necessarily. It has the has the trappings of one. Like it still has that thing where it's it's on closer inspection without you being like super close to it. It is moving slightly the way that you would expect magical writing to move. Is it a divine language? Uh, give me knowledge divine. Oh, knowledge sorry, religion. knowledge of religion. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ugh, I rolled really badly. What did you uh, roll? I got thirteen. Yeah, it might be. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, a, is it a local knowledge? Uh, it is nothing that you've ever seen before. But bearing in mind that you do have specialist knowledge, but I'm not going to get bothered to get you to roll it, it's not one of the traps, the magical traps, that you've been trained to recognise and how to sort of disable. Yeah. It could just be super obscure, though. Should I shoot it just in case? No, just leave it. I don't know what it is, though. But what if we walk past it and then it explodes? Yeah. I mean, can I, think... I shoot it just in case? Please? Okay, okay. Cool. Let's be cautious. I'm going to shoot it from a long way off. Uh, I have a range of 110 foot. I am going to speed things along rather than getting you to do attack rolls because I know you're good at this and it's basically hitting a barn door. It clatters off exactly where you want it to hit. All right, let's... I mean, nothing exploded, so that's me out of ideas. going to roll something past it. So she has this adventurous kit, just maybe like a ration pack it, or something. It just seems like transmutation, guys. I mean, I think it... Like, yeah, but it might be... trans the wall. Yeah, but that's so how you hide a trap. Okay. You think it's just to scare us? Oh, or is there to change the shape of the corridor very slightly to hide a mechanical trap? Now that is possible, I suppose. So you roll, roll something doing the yeah, corridor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you roll something down the corridor. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say a ration, like a big, yeah. like something like, like a sausage. <laughs> a great big wheel of cheese. Big, yeah, I was going to say. Oh, yes! you roll, I'm going to say wheel of cheese. Yeah. Wheel of cheese. It's a wheel little of cheese. Edam. Yeah, we're yeah. playing Skyrim now. Yeah, that's yes. fine. So I'm okay with that. You roll it down the corridor. A cabbage. Uh, everyone, give me a perception check. Nineteen. Sixteen. Twenty-one. You're, these must be miscast. That's a natural one. Good. Again. Always, always with this dice. Just, just use that one. Then. Good. Yeah. I know that, you know, we lost 30, um, but we still have someone. So, like, Sasha it's and... It's a corridor. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha and Grizzop. Mm. Yes. You hear a very, very faint click as it rolls past that sigil, I'm going to call it, for the sake of ease. Mm-hmm. Nothing appears to happen with it. Azu, you think you can hear a slithering right at the edge of your, at the edge of your hearing. Uh, oh, arse, it might set off an alarm. I mean, maybe... I don't... 
I don't like the sound of it. Like, can you hear that? The click, yeah. Could... For the sake of ease, by the way, I'm going to say that you really chucked this and you are 30 feet away, which is as close as you... Yeah. Uh, sorry, as distant as you can be and still do detect magic, just for the sake of maths. All right, Hamid. Um, Not no, that I'm wait, asking hear distances. Anything. What did you guys hear? A click. Like a, oh, something's happened. I mean, I'd sneak up, but it's a corridor. So if you cast <laughs> invisibility on me, then I can just go and see what's up. The thing is, if it is some sort of trap and you're invisible and it chucks you into the river, we won't be able to see you to help. Well, can't you break it by, like, screaming? No. That's no. what happened when I stabbed that guy. Yeah. Like, if you, if you well, attack just, someone... I'll just throw a dagger at you or something. Um, I yeah, don't attack the air. Don't do that. Don't throw daggers at uh, Actually, in this system, you can attack objects. So if you try and break an object, that's technically an attack which will break invisibility. Oh, what happened? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Magic has weird rules, is what I'm thinking. In fairness, Sasha, you you will have run into invisibility maybe once or twice and yeah. know the basics of it by this stage. Because yeah, like, I'm pretty sure that's actually. I don't know if we played it in this game actually, but I'm. It has she come will up. be. Her, yeah. She will have been aware that if you stab someone while you're invisible, you're not invisible anymore. Like. Certainly at the levels you're operating, yeah. Yeah, that's just standard knowledge. If you're gonna. Yeah. Get, how, how do you even get by without knowing that? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Something's. Happened. Well, fine then. I'll just go. She goes forward. I've I'm going to back you up, I think. Because right. okay. I think I feel bad. Um, but... a- 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 Azo, the point is she's sneaking. But there's no one here. Uh, okay, what if something goes off and you have to dodge it very quickly? You're wearing plate. Uh-huh. Well, then it might hit her plate rather than... Or she could fall into the river in a coffin. True, that, yes. That is very true. Okay. Oh, oh, oh all right. Um... <laughs> Going forward with daggers out. I'm covering her with uh, an mm-hmm. arrow. Yeah, I'm going to ready an axe just in case. Okay, can you give me a reflex save of Will's... No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you I'm approach... good at all of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You approach... The big letter. Uh, you notice that it starts to move slightly faster than it was, so it goes from imperceptible to perceptible. Yeah. Nothing appears to be happening... You make it, you can stand in front of it, nothing appears to happen. You walk past it. You walk past it. Avoiding the area where I heard the click. Give me a perception check. 30. 30? Yep. (laughs) 17 plus 13 is 30, right? Yes. You think you... I say you think. You can find a pressure plate, Mm -hmm. which is immediately in front of the sort of sigil itself. And then you sort of have a faff around, and yeah, there's definitely a very subtle, very, very subtle, like you probably rolled what would be required to see it, Mm. subtle (laughs) pressure plate immediately in front of the sigil. I can't give you more than that. All right, guys, just come forward and avoid standing there. Okay, okay. Uh, I need marching orders from people, please. Uh, I would like to cast read magic as well. Okay. So, uh, first things first, I need the the order that you are approaching the thing. I mean, Sasha's past it. Well, yeah, Sasha's past it. I'll go next. Okay. I'll go last to bring up the rear, because that seems to be the... Okay. Okay, cool. In which case, then, you can cast read magic from, like, 30 feet as well, can't you? Yeah. I mean, it's not a rain. It's it's a big, huge sigil, so it's not like you need your reading glasses. (laughs) It's like a motorway sign. When you cast the spell, sort of approaching it and casting the spell... The uh, movement of the sigil greatly accelerates. Mm. I don't mean it's like whipping around or anything, but it goes from, yeah, this thing's definitely reacting to you casting a spell, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Azu, give me a perception check, and Hamid, give me a perception check. Okay. 24. Also 24. No, 22. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm assuming that you're going to stop to cast that spell. Uh, yeah. That happens. What do you do? Like it, I, it, it I, just, carry on. I just wanted to see if it. Okay. Azu, the thing is, right, you for, see. For listeners at home, he's told us to be nervous, right? Yeah. He's told us this before, and it's been a joke, so we never actually know how much to. But like, that's why every little move is like. Before you arrived, take, Lydia, he actually like was rubbing his hands together, going, "Oh, I'm looking forward to today." I've got so some horrible I'm stuff in. Literally, like, I'll I'm take one so... step. I take <laughs> yeah, is that one why step. Spent Twenty with... minutes walking down a corridor. <laughs> The weight on the balls of my feet. I take one step. I hold my breath. So, so we're all really tense. I don't know if that's coming through. Yeah. So, if, you, so. if you guys are tense as well, great. If not, this is probably not very entertaining. So, anyway, yeah. does anything happen? Oh yes, absolutely. But I'm happy to. I'm happy to wait while people complain that nothing's happening. <laughs> What's happening, Alex? Yeah. So, Azu, 
You spot it first. Ooh. A very, very small little section of the ceiling slides back as Hamid approaches specifically. <gasps> and you see what seems to be like a grub or something crawls and drops down onto Hamid. Oh, Hamid, when it drops onto you, you go, ah, a grub. <laughs> like, it it lands in an obvious place, like, on your shoulder. Okay, yeah. I've and played I enough also, limbo to know what is going on here. I also is... rolled very high on my perception check, so I, that's why. Yeah, I exactly. Noticed. Like, you notice it. It immediately, and you don't get a reaction to this, it immediately tries to bite you. What's your ace, touch AC, sorry? Uh, 18. You get very, very lucky. Uh, basically, it goes... And you see, like, Azu, you can see it's Hamid, you kind of like, there's something there. Yeah. Its face seems to sort of briefly expand, exposing far too many oh, teeth for something that small. Oh. And it immediately <laughs> dives in, like, really, really tries to guzzle into Hamid and just grabs a mouthful of cloth. It clearly landed awkwardly, and it is just... In terms of size, it's, it's about as long as, say, my thumb. Its mouth seems to suddenly, like... Double its size while it's trying to bite. <laughs> oh, I can't. So everyone can give me initiative at this stage. Oh my god, I hate this kind of thing. 19. 18. 19. 6. 12. Obviously, bear in mind in this initiative order that unless, like, Azu yells out, you can as a free action, or Hamid yells out, I'm assuming you do. Oh god, yes. Neither Grizzop nor Sasha are aware until that happens, obviously. Absolutely, I yell out. Ah, get it off me! Get it off me! Grubs! <laughs> Grizz up, you are first. Uh, I'll turn around, go, oh, gross, and shoot it. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured that last bit, yeah. yeah. Okay, in which case you are going to have to give me an attack roll. Yeah, I, William Tell moment. I have no penalty for shooting into melee, just FYI. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, bo- bo- bo. I'm only doing one shot because it's a grub. Mm-hmm. 20. As in natural? Or just. No, okay, 20. cool, it hits. Five damage. Five damage? Yeah. So you manage to hit the thing and sort of skim off, skim off it. You clearly do a huge amount of damage to this tiny thing. Technically, it is still there and still going for Hamid. But to be perfectly clear, like, you reckon that if you'd maybe just done a bit more damage, it'd already be dead. I Take cast it. Magic Missile, which is infallible and always hits. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I, hit, I shoot the flea. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Yeah, the, the four missiles kind of shoot out from me in separate directions and reconverge. And there's that, my, there's that really, really shoulder. unnerving moment where you're like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> I know this isn't going to miss, but also... <laughs> Technically, if it dies after the first one, I guess the others just hit my shoulder. I mean... <laughs> Don't say that. It'd be such a shame if he didn't have two paladins with him. Uh, three, six... 11, 16 now. <laughs> I think it might be dead. Uh, all of the magic missiles converge and it just explodes on your shoulder. Like, I don't mean it covers you in gunk. It isn't big enough to do that. It just, they, they all hit one another magic missiles converging perfectly and it just, there is nothing left. I am looking forward to the sound effect that plays in <laughs> I recording. I scamper forward to get out of whatever from... I was underneath something the, and I want the, to be the, not the, underneath it anymore. The grub hatch. As you, know? is, you technically are still on the other side of the trap. As in, like, everyone else has made it past, you are technically still on the side of the trap to pass it. Hold oh, your shield oh, up oh. as you go underneath. I like don't have a shield. Oh, but also, we know where it dropped out now, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Right, I'm aiming my bow at the ceiling because if another one drops out, it's getting skewered. I'm going to drop you out of initiative then. Uh, your partially described ready to action goes off. You see. Two more grubs start trying to make their way out. <gasps> bang, bang. Like, they're so easy to kill. They I bank mean, on you not knowing I, that they're I'm there. ready in action as well. And if, if any look like they've survived an arrow, I've got mi- magic missile just, on my fingers. Just, just fireball it. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Die, <laughs> grubs! There's, there's, there's no kill like overkill. Uh, oh, there God. appeared to be three. They are so easily killed. Like, so easily killed. They're relying on the surprise. Yeah, and nothing else. Like, bang. Tell you what, Bryn, give me a knowledge arcana. Uh, Ben, give me a knowledge nature. Yeah, I was going to say. 23. (laughs) Rubbish, 11. 11. (laughs) Uh, 23 might actually be enough. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. There's a dot there. (gasps) 14. It's probably still not enough. (laughs) (laughs) It is for both of you. Oh, cool. Hamid, you learnt about this in a very different type of lesson to uh, Grizzop. I'm going to give Grizzop his lesson first. Like, smash back to, you sat there in, like, the, the seminary and there's the blackboard there and he goes, 
Well, you know, there's lots of different types of uh, grubs that you can get. There's one called Wizard Shackle. It's not really going to bother you. I wouldn't fret about it. If you've got an arcane caster, watch out for that, but that's about it. <laughs> Hamid, we're going we're gonna to jump to one of the one lessons that you maybe, mem- maybe remembered in university from your, like, your time when you were a wizard. I mean, mo- most of my knowledge of Arcana is just being dumped into my yep. ha- me- memory. This one was an also. actual lesson, cool. you know. Very, very different tone. There are few things as insipid <laughs> and dangerous to the arcane caster as the wizard shackle. It may seem like not much. He has one in a jar on the desk. Yeah. It may seem not like much, but this tiny grub will burrow into your flesh, eat your spells, and attack you at the same time. Someone sitting next to me probably jokes about it looking like a penis, and I laugh. That is the kind of tone yeah, we're looking really at. Really like Wait, it. was it? Joke. Was it? Was face? Gideon. Gideon. Yeah, yeah. definitely was I'd probably Gideon. probably laugh. Pretending I find does, it really does funny. Does Liliana, who's sitting at the front of the class, turn around and shush you both angrily? <laughs> but she kind of smiles when she does it to Hamid. Mm. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Also, you mean insidious rather than insipid again? I mean, both. He loves that word, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, both. both. Loves it, it just rolls off the tongue better. But uh, yeah, in, in real terms, it is very much not particularly a threat if you can see it coming. It relies Such on ambush, spells. but it is also a real, real popular one for assassins. Like, if you have to go take out a big, powerful sorcerer, slip one of them in their bed. They're going to wake up without a single spell. Great. It turns out they're then just a guy. Yeah, like, <laughs> you'd be amazed how easy it is to kill the great eldritch being when they're just Gary. <laughs> and on that horrifying note, I'm going to take a break. Yeah. Sorry, any Gary. <laughs> Rusty Quill presents Season 4 of the Magnus Archives, the internationally renowned weekly horror fiction podcast which follows the statements and mysteries that lurk inside the Magnus Institute, a British organisation dedicated to researching the esoteric and the weird. Join head archivist Jonathan Sims and his dedicated team as they continue to record and investigate paranormal statements, but be warned, things have changed. The team is in tatters, and where before the statements were unsettling, together they have begun to form a picture that is truly horrifying. Because the archives are awake, they are hungry, and they are not alone. Season 4 of the Magnus Archives available for free on January 10th, 2019 via iTunes, Spotify, and all other good podcast players. For more information, visit RustyQuill.com. And welcome back. So I'm going to give one other bit of info for Sasha now that you've seen it go off. Yep. Oh, uh, now you've seen this kind of thing before. Mm. Now that you think about it, this is one of those kind of traps that you set to deliberately get magic users. Like, you put them nice early in the dungeon so that then they can't use their magic later to, like, get past other traps. Like, you've seen this kind of thing. The sigil is probably just there to be really interesting to, like, a wizard or something. To uh... tempt me into casting spells. Yeah, and like... Not- making it obvious that I'm a spellcaster. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you've seen this before. It's a really efficient way of getting rid of wizards. It's one of those things that, like, relies on wizards' egos. So it basically always, always works. works. <laughs> like, always uh, works. Yeah, actually, Every actually. time. Oh, well, that's so, horrible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. ego and sense of curiosity. Oh, disgusting. Ego. Right. So this might mean that we might need to be using magic further down the corridor. Well, magic's always well, useful, we're, right? We're going the wrong direction now. Uh, no, we, we don't, don't know that. I don't think. Not well, if there's the a fa- trap. But the facility was. That... Well, no, the big hole we found was there. Oh, I guess. Oh, okay, well, let's carry on. Everyone, give me another perception check, please. Whee! Lovely trap. Oh, I've rolling? got a natural one. Yes. Oh, lovely. Yay. Nineteen. Boo. Twelve. Good. Uh, br- Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh no. This part of the corridor is definitely completely safe. You can totally trust my assumptions. Oh no. You have yeah. been very good. And you know what? That's actually a very accurate summation of the uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you uh, continue down the corridor a little longer. Absolutely fine, mate. Uh, And then you see another one of, it appears to be, those big steel drop-down, like, water room doors. Mm. Oh, no. However... bypass switch. It is... uh, you, you, Yeah. Give me a perception check specific, because you've seen that, and you're getting huge bonuses. Uh, That is 25. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you find a bypass switch, same as the last one. You reckon that you can just... Boop. Job done. I boop. You boop? Yeah. The door opens. The door on the other side opens. It is a carbon copy of the water drowning room. See, I feel I feel like the, the, the traps and stuff are trying to stop us going that way and going this way is easier. Well, this is easier because I saw the bypass switch. 
Yeah. Well, also, we might find the entrance, which is helpful, and then we can go back and follow the river, see where it's going. But and I'd rather know what's up here than <laughs> not. And also, maybe Definitely. when I step into that room, it'll fill with water and I'll nearly die again. Uh, can we tie like, like, a, not. a rope round you first? Then, yeah, maybe. for, for Sasha's benefit and no one else's, you're like 99% certain that's not going to happen, but that doesn't mean you can't lay it on super that's, thick. That's what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> All right, rope time. As his soul shrivels up a little bit more... <laughs> <laughs> Go. Go. Oh, it's really nice having someone that doesn't have that much of a care for their own personal safety <laughs> surrounded by people that do wacka 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 okay now how uh, trauma hurts to be clear on, on the other side of the door mm-hmm. appears sort of pitch black the only light is coming I am presuming you haven't said so but Hamid I'm presuming that you're occasionally redoing oh, yeah, dancing yeah. lights you can do it as much as you want yeah. so why wouldn't you so yeah there's just the sort of your shadow stretching out into it appears to be more corridor but again now it's dark as opposed to before there's been the occasional like maybe a bit of light well maybe like you know it was a natural worked cavern sometimes just a bit of natural light's been making it the way in all right well i'll just go through and you know if i get trapped or whatever just pull me out then that's a plan. Yeah, yeah. I'm All holding right. onto the rope so tightly. I'm like, we're not, we're not, we're not failing this. Remember no, the last time that the door slammed closed. We should get the the, the adamantine Everyone dagger. Give that me a perception check. Twenty. 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 Whoa. <laughs> Twenty-four. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't banking on that. <laughs> those, were, those weren't natural. No, not yeah, natural. No, 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 it doesn't matter. Like that's still um, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ah. You're right, assassin. How you doing? Yeah. I may have. Shallows, eh? I may have spent all of my, the challenge of my challenges to you just assuming you're not going to notice anything. Okay. Look, uh, Alex, well, I get a your twenty fault. if I roll a seven. Like you literally need to. <laughs> oh have... no, it's everyone else. That's the problem. Oh right. So, my, my bonus is plus twelve. Like, you I'm can, also good at. Yeah, exactly. You're def- <laughs> pretty much as good. Yeah. You can definitely hear coming down the corridor, basically mechanical sounds like ratchets clanking I don't mean the sounds of like <laughs> ratchet and clank, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. let me finish Sorry. I don't mean the sounds of like hammering or chiseling I don't mean the sounds of people working yep. I am talking mechanisms only yep. also oh the mechanisms good yeah. also you distinctly hear the sound of running water up ahead so um, just to clarify when you say coming down the corridor do you mean emanating from a, a fixed point coming down the corridor or, or, or coming like towards us down <laughs> good point emanating from a fixed point further down the corridor like ambient sound once you guys stopped discussing how Sash is probably going to die in this trap it's like <laughs> oh I can hear that me too <laughs> right okay well I'll go look at these automatons what was that funny word you used Hammett robots, robots. yeah yeah uh, <laughs> I like that Robot. That's what they call the clockwork servants. You know the ones we saw in Paris. But that's what they call them in Prague. Oh, oh cool, cool language lesson. Can we go? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Great. Let's go. Okay. The only thing I enjoy win- more than winding Grizz up is winding Ben up by making things <laughs> move slow. <laughs> no, that was Grizz up. <laughs> I'll go really fast then through this deadly trap, Grizzop. Can cool. I get? Sorry I for just, getting just in meant, the way. I just meant not talking about what. She runs. She walks <laughs> briskly through the room. I just. I look at the others. Go. Why? <laughs> Why is she like this? She gets through the room. Are people following, or are you waiting for Sasha to go on on her own? I think once she's crossed and safe, then we all follow. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. You head down the corridor. With dancing lights. Right? With dancing lights yeah. ahead, yeah. Eventually, at the other end, you see that the corridor opens out into a larger room. You have loads of notice on it thanks to dancing lights. And at the other end of the corridor, it is clear that's where the sounds of, of machinery are coming. It also has a certain sort of echoey quality. I'm taking this all from the previous perception chat. It's clearly a large room that's on the other side. There's clearly a lot of moving parts in there. There isn't the sounds of, like... I don't know how else to describe it. It's not like the sounds of like robots going berserk, for instance. Like it is, things are ticking over and it's running. This, it's, yes, yeah. thank you. That's this what is I'm trying me to say. The building simulacrums or simulacrums building more of themselves. It's fa- I is, it, is it the noises on. of a factory? Yes, but it does have some weirdnesses to it, okay. which make it's, it a bit strange. Cool. It's the noise of a weird factory. Yeah, there you go. It's the noise. I mean, uh, let's get pedestrian <laughs> with it. It sounds like a weird factory. Cool. <laughs> All right. So we head into Tesla Motors. <laughs> <laughs> Behold, I am Musk. No. Uh, so, you head down to the corridor. There's no doors or anything, and you can see it opening out, and I'm going to let you Scooby-Doo it so that you can look without entering the room. <laughs> Yay! On the other side, As you see a cavernous room. It's very, very large. 
and you find yourself at the top of a set of stairs that goes straight down. This isn't a walkway that goes around a room, it just heads straight down. So you can see what is clearly a, a factory floor. It has a lot of things that like we would recognize as say like, you know, motorized arms for the construction of things, like an automated construction facility. You can see that there is a large conveyor belt that is running along that appears to have chunks of half constructed thing. Like I'm not even gonna play coy. It's probably simulacrum chassis. And they are in the process of being constructed. And everyone give me a perception check for more detail. Twenty. Seven. Four. Good. Twenty. Good. Fifteen. Good. Eighteen. Okay. Hammered and Grizzop, but obviously you can share it with the party. I just needed to gauge how much you can see. You can see that there are like four major sort of in and outs to this room is the best way to describe it. Firstly, down towards the base of the factory floor, you can actually see the whole river is entering into the room into what is effectively like a, a sluice piping system. So there's a huge, like, the your stairs sort of run over the top of it almost. There is a huge piping system that then seems to divert the water around the facility. In addition to that, is you... anyone else getting a real urge to play Factorio? <laughs> this is very much the vibe I'm going for. You can also see right at the far end of your dark vision, because you're, you're clearly at the sort of start end of this conveyor belt, what appears to be raw adamantine ore is coming in from a conveyor belt from a very large tunnel and heading into a hopper as well. It's, uh, it's actually double packed into each thing because of yep. the efficient set of furnaces. They do. An auto they do. Yeah. See, Sa Sasha, Sasha knows this. It makes life very easy for yeah, us. Yeah. You are clearly, like I said, at the entrance way to this. I was going to say that's funny if you play Factorio, but it's not. It's just vaguely satisfying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like. Yep. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the other it. salient point of note is there appears to be no one there at all. No people of any kind. Mr. Sealy? It doesn't even appear to be abandoned. It just appears to be empty. We, we can throw all the bombs we want. This is brilliant. Destroy it. Let's blow the place up. Mr. Ceiling? Suspiciously at the ceiling. I'd love to put an echo on that. It's far too loud. Is that is that your scary, like... Well, thing, it's just when, when I've seen like massive weird stuff like this, it's usually being run by some diabolical creatures. Yeah, well, so. I've never seen anything like this before. This is ridiculous. This is like you know. So I've, as I've been getting into magical devices, honestly, like I have been saying that maybe automation will take people's jobs. And if you look <laughs> at something like this, there's a lot of planning that we're going to have to be doing. Like, think about all that rioting that was going on down Damascus, right? Mm. Like, that sort of thing is going to get... There really wasn't come. a riot, but okay. maybe we should disrupt... Yeah, just that out then. you got bombs. Yeah. yeah. All it's right. very obvious to you, by the way, that this factory floor is quite hazardous to wander around because, you know, lots of big moving parts, blades, blow Not torches. For... Is there... It looks like you probably could navigate it. It doesn't look like it's been built deliberately so that no one could go here. It's just that they might, you know, turn bits of it off before they try and... Fun fact, uh, allegedly, the, uh, one of the reasons there's more accidents in Tesla factories is that Elon Musk doesn't like the colour yellow, so he doesn't like hazard lines messing up his gorgeous factory floor. So, oh my God. people don't know where is safe to step. Now, this is disputed by some. Uh, Elon Musk, maybe? <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so basically we are in Tesla Motors. Okay, is there any sort This is the Death Star handrails of factory. <laughs> yeah. This is... is there... You notice there's no colour red. I don't know why. We'll have to examine that. Is there anywhere sure. which looks like a particularly delicate mechanism where I could throw a bomb in and then walk away and it would blow up the inside of whatever machine it is? Like something that's tangling together all the wires... In a it doesn't look like you can bring down the entire thing with a single bomb. It does look like you could bring down a bit of it with a bomb. This has not been made to resist <laughs> maintenance. And there's a hopper of adamantine and all. Uh, a hopper of adamantine. By the way, the amount of adamantine that's coming out of there is loads. So, like, so loads. First, I'm going to go over and I'm going to take a bunch of chunks of adamantine and stick them in a bag of holding. Then I'm going to take... How big are they? they like, can I lift them? Yeah, so they're okay. all, like, the largest ones are, like, football sized the smallest ones are maybe like the size of your fist it is worth bearing in mind it's ore it's raw ore yeah. so that's not like a football of adamantine well, i mean okay there's, there's lots there's lots of benefits to having a bag of holding full of adamantine one it's worth a lot yep two it will stop them using it yeah 
three, it's almost indestructible. So it makes a really good thing to chuck into delicate moving parts. Correct. These are all good points. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're so smart, <laughs> yes. Bryn. So I will explain this as I start loading up a bag of holding with Adam. You had oh, I thought you were just looting. So, <laughs> well, is it? I mean, it's worth something. If, if we don't have to use it all, great, but... So bearing in mind, this is a large room and you do have to cross the room yeah. in order to get to this thing. So I'm going to give you some description as you go. Heading along this uh, floor, you do notice, even just at the corners of your eye using sort of dancing lights and so on, oh, there does appear to be the odd, like, tool that's been put down. Neatly, not like dropped in a flea or anything like that. The tunnel that the adamantine is coming out of is big. Uh, at the risk of, I didn't intend this, but it's becoming very Tesla heavy. It's clearly some kind of large borehole. <laughs> Um, like a big, long, yep. and you can see like the work mark. So like it was done by a single, very large drill. Okay. So. And Elon there is. Musk is a borehole. I don't. He, he, yeah, he's got. He's got, a, a, he's got a tunnel company called the Boring Company. Oh, that's like. Okay. Welcome, welcome to the Tesla show. Apparently. <laughs> um, so. It's really making this episode feel elongated. Oh. No, 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 not. Let's not. Oh. Let's just not. The tunnel is very wide it's clearly wide enough for say vehicles to go up and down it beside this <laughs> conveyor <Vehicles. laughs> <laughs> only ones that are really good at self-driving unlike tesla cars <laughs> <sighs> it's like james ross is back except it's less aggressive and just more kind of insipid <laughs> oh, i can't believe you just come in and sipid james ross <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there's there is a large hole and running up and down it is clearly like not tarmac, but, you know, like, flattened paving for people to travel up and down. And the conveyor belt runs the long distance. It goes a decent distance, and it isn't... I should point out, while, while I say there's a lot coming in, I don't mean that it's, like, you know, 15 tonnes a second. I just mean that it's constant. It's not like there's a bit, there's another bit. It's, it's clearly a big process that's going on. So, yeah, you can help yourself to pretty much as much as you want in terms of Advantino. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to load up on it. Like I said, three, three, three benefits to doing that. Add to your inventory... Bag of holding full of adamantine ore. Cool. I mean, also, open brackets, Alex regrets his decisions, close brackets. <laughs> Should we just start throwing that into all the really delicate pipes then? Yes. Yeah, sounds about right. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. So, what's can each I... person doing, just so I know, and then I'll go from there. Can I do a disabled device of the entire factory <laughs> <laughs> to yes. try yes. and work out what is delicate enough to really damage? Uh, also, what bits might be valuable and Nick of Just to check, no one has knowledge engineering, do they? No. Okay, can you give me a disabled device check, please? Only 21. You reckon that you could take out probably one of the conveyor belts? Taking out everything in this room is going to take a few hours and dedicated work. It's not like, come on, let's do this and let's go. Like, there's a lot here and it's almost like someone wanted it not to break down much so there's like <laughs> redundant systems and things it's all very annoying but yeah you reckon you could take out one of the conveyor belts and obviously if one of the conveyor belts down, goes down even if there are redundant systems it's still going to be a right pain yep. I mean I, I, I vote we take a few hours and yep. get, make, break everything uh, yeah cool yeah. yeah let's do that this oh, is that making terrifying like... super weapons <laughs> I think I could spare like four hours maybe yeah yeah and um, also we could see if we could divert the, the um one of the conveyor belts to chuck the adamantine all straight in the river and block it up gradually. Oh, I was just going to block the pipe so the facility fills with water and then... Oh, that's a good idea too. Yeah. It's almost like leaving things unsupervised. It's a terrible way of we running get things. Started. That's mm. fine. Industrial sabotage! Dun, 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 montage, montage. Dun, 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 <laughs> montage, montage. Okay, can everyone just... Can everyone please just give me... I'm just going to say a flat D20 because you've all got different styles. Some of you can just smash stuff. Some of you can pull important wires. Some of you can just throw adamantine at your problems. Nine. Yep. Nineteen. Yep. Fourteen. Yep. Sixteen. Ooh. As you smash. Okay. <laughs> As you're definitely smashing things. smile in your voice. Yeah. It's just like that. It's so good. I need to know one last thing. Are you splitting up to get as much done as possible? Are you all staying together for, like, split safety? Up. Split up. Yeah. Split up. It's good. It all. Good. Does it all come to life and kill us? I'm going to draw a map. No! Yeah. Can we just kind of pause the timer a sec? Okay, everyone does a decent job of smashing things up. Hamid, you get to do slightly better than everyone else. How is it you're doing so? Um, I, I'm less rushed. I actually just take the time 
and, and assess the situation and I'm looking at the early part and the, like the, you know, the feeding mechanisms and I work out like very precisely exactly where to insert a big lump of adamantine to just have it grind something completely stop give a nasty screech noise as everything just comes to a halt see I love that I can, you can hear from the other end of the room that this thing sounds like bash bash from Azu and you're just like boop <laughs> can everyone please give me a perception check 23. okay 23 23 27 9 9 <laughs> hey let me do one last check and then they pour in through the ceiling Maybe you should oh, say that no no. no 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 I've already pulled that once I can pull that twice this might not be cool this might be mechanical spiders yeah it'll be more like all the different bits of simulacrum come to life okay like, 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 all bits of eyes. Eyes. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Grizzop, where are you on the board so I can make sure I've got this right? There. Okay. Hamid? Yep. You think that you see someone moving around near you, but then when you go and investigate, like, just even just giving it a quick look, there's no one there. Grizzop, you also think that you saw someone moving around Hamid, but, the, like, there's so many moving parts, you cannot possibly trace them. Okay, um, I'm going to turn around and go investigate that then. Mm-hmm. Um, in which case then, feel free to just accelerate around to where you're effectively going. Um, okay, at which point, Azu, yeah. what's your AC? I'm not swearing. Um, <laughs> my AC <laughs> is 18. Azu, yeah. an arrow misses you. You have no idea where it was fired from. Who's up? <laughs> <laughs> the only way you can get your attention. <laughs> what? Uh, I d- did you did you accidentally shoot at me? No. What? Something just shot an arrow at yeah, me. Yeah, I think I saw a person. Over where? How did you see anything? I thought maybe for a second, but then. Nothing. All right. Uh, Sasha somersaults over to where the little ones are <laughs> and is standing there, daggers out, with her back to them. Perfect. Uh, move yeah. yourself on the board. I'm not going to get you into initiative yet. Yeah, I'm also going to quickly run over. For the simple reason that none of you have any idea where that came from. Yeah. Can we see the arrow? Uh, yeah, you, you, if you go over and investigate, I'll just let you go over and investigate. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to use my... I'm going to use... I'm going to use the... the re- no, no, I'm going to use the range-finding mechanisms of my eyes to look... <laughs> Far away. <laughs> um, what surface did it bounce off of? Uh, the wall. Which? Okay. The wall that Azu was next to. All right. Arrow's going a straight line, so it's probably over here somewhere. Look over here somewhere, because that arrow's Moose, going a straight line. Move uh, where you're looking. Here. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, sure. Everyone, give me perception checks again. Twenty-one. Twenty-six. Thirty. Natural twenty from uh, Helen. Uh, yeah. th- 13. No, mine's 13. But not a natural 20. That's just how much I perceive. <laughs> What's your AC, Hamid? Uh, 18. 18. An arrow stabs into you from your back. It appears Ow. to have come in from the opposite direction to where you all thought the shot came from. Dealing. Let me get this right. That's fine. An arrow jabs into the back of your shoulder, dealing four damage. Ow! Did you get shot? I factored in your <laughs> perception checks. None of you saw where the shot came from. Uh, I mean, yes, you can see an arrow sticking out of me. I oh, s- no. I spin round and look at where it came from. Let's get into initiative order at this stage. Everyone yeah. roll me initiative, please. 18. 13. 17. 24. Faff, 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 faff. Guys, you only rolled that dice once. <laughs> <laughs> Another shot comes out from all of the movement and the darkness. Sasha, what's your AC? Uh, 20. This is rolling brutally well. Like, really brutally well. I've not rolled less than an 18 on any check for it so far. Right. Which is madness. So, wait, you actually hit her. That's yeah, I do. impressive. Yeah, I do. I really do. I mean, it'd be a bit of a shame if we met enemies that weren't even capable of hitting us. <laughs> yeah. uh, it only deals two damage, but again, it, it clips into you from the shoulder. Um, Rizop, at this stage, you'll have seen enough to get a bead on the arrow, and you're the one who knows arrows. 
Uh, <laughs> they appear to be like adamantine edged, like masterwork, expensive kit. This isn't, say, like a monster. Like, you know, you can get like tri monsters and I don't know, like stuff that are. <sighs> the way goblins are often portrayed in Pathfinder, for instance. That kind of doesn't this have is that. No amateur. Yeah, that's the best way to describe it. This has assassin written all over it. They're protecting a super weapon factory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At which point, then it is Sasha. You are up. She's just gonna melt into the shadows <laughs> and try and go in roughly the direction that the arrows came from. Give me a stealth check. Thirty-five. Okay. <laughs> I forgot how good you were at still. How? <laughs> no, 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 wait, 30. 30, that's fine. Um, so which direction did it come from? Roughly, even if you're just like there, rather than here. Right, okay, so she's finished. You can cross the conveyor belts fairly easily. Oh, well, I might as well, if I've beaten the thingy check. <gasps> I'm just going to go on the conveyor belt. <laughs> Robo rally. Robo rally. So that would move you an additional five feet. Yeah, gonna go round. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you cross the corner, yep. you do manage to see someone <gasps> is sort of hidden amongst the workings and so on. You can tell, by the way, mm. that they are a master of stealth, whoever they are, because they are hiding really well. The only reason that you're managing this is because you're on the conveyor belt. They hadn't assumed that someone would be trying to look from that angle. So she's like... What you appear to see is a... uh, Your guess at this is a woman. They are Mm human-sized. They appear to be wearing a sort of... um, What's the word? Hood? Yes. Not a cowl, but, you know, like a... Like a something that isn't obscuring the face, basically, is what I'm getting at. They appear to be a sort of like attractive-looking human woman I at mean, this stage. Sasha is parkour sexual, as we have established. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, you know she what? Definitely has a skills crush so far. So this this person's very good, and the way that they're staying stealthy is they're basically not even paying attention. They're just stood between some machinery, and without looking at where they are, they're just moving to avoid them, like. They, they're good Moving at... Moving in time with the machinery. They, are, the they are good at the things that you are good at. <laughs> right. You see they are lining up hiring? a shot. <laughs> <laughs> you can see they are lining up a shot on Hamid, and I think I'm going to have to end the episode there because I'm running long. I'm running very long on this episode. Whoa, right, so... We're in a factory. Yep. You you've already begun to make a mess of it, and mm-hmm. I, got, I got an archer who's, who's taking pot shots. Cool. And Sasha is on a moving conveyor belt. Yep. Yeah. With weapons out. With no possible ramifications whatsoever. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Bye, guys. Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial International license. Today's episode was recorded and produced by Alexander J. Newell. To comment on episodes, make donations, and view links, images, videos, and show notes, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. Visit us on Facebook. Tweet us on Twitter at The Rusty Quill, or email us at mail at rustyquill.com. Thanks for listening. Welcome to episode 113 of the Rusty Quill Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM... 113.0. I'm your host and GM, Alex. Do you know with me today I have? One to tea three times, it's Ben Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> One to tea three. Come on. Eleven to three times, it's Bryn Monroe. Whatever the binary is. <laughs> Lydia Nicholas. And... I, d- I don't know numbers as well as the rest of you, Helen Gould. Okay, Helen, I don't want to break into you, but one to three is not a real number. I, in fact, made that up. That's so. how bad I am. <laughs> it's actually pronounced 11 T111. So, or X. Wait, wait, I can do this. X. 
No, C X I I I. Oh, you know what? Let's do all of the episodes in Roman numerals from now on. No, I that'd won't. be fine. So number comedy. <laughs> hey. that's, Pretty sure that's, that's illegal in this one. setting. <laughs> I mean, it's not for copyright reasons. No. <laughs> we are going to pick up more or less where we left off. As a brief rundown, you have... We didn't say who we were playing. We got distracted. Oh, you know what? <laughs> we maybe should do another intro. We can keep this as a wonderful blooper. You all ready? <laughs> Hello, and <laughs> Oh, that, that was a much better take. Well done. Yeah. I just thought I'd do it really quick. That was one minute. I thought I'd do it really, long. really <laughs> quick. <laughs> Right. The editor is like, you said you wouldn't <laughs> waste my time. So sorry, Larry. Okay. Are we all ready?